everyone this is a very quick video i'm trying to keep it under six minutes so i can send it to you all by whatsapp um my thoughts on the virus everybody's worried about it right now um, but i think that everybody who knows me knows i'm a little bit technical and i like to get to the root of problems by looking at the fundamental mechanics and, and i think i really want to give my thoughts on this real quick before it's too late the bottom line is um there's an easy possibility of overreacting to things like this and some people do um, but panic is really an attempt to act with an absence of knowledge. So I'm going to try and give you everything I've figured out. Um, the bottom line is that this thing is very contagious. So how contagious? So is it like the most contagious thing on the planet? And the answer is yes or no. Uh, there are charts that have come out so far saying that it's only a tenth as contagious as measles because measles is a benchmark for the most super contagious thing on the planet. The trouble is... Measles, you know you're sick. Like everything else, cold, flu, measles, when you get sick, your body recognizes it right away if you're exposed. And within hours, your nose starts running, you start to feel sick, your body is corralling all the proteins and plasmas to build an army to fight it, and you know you're sick. With this one, you don't know you're sick. You don't, the body doesn't recognize it. So you don't know you're sick for days, a week, the average between when people are exposed and infected to when they feel sick enough to report to a doctor, so far the average is 11 days. Think about how many people, including loved ones, including older folks in your family, think of how many people you're exposed to and expose on a daily basis, let alone 11 days. That's practically two weeks. By the time you feel a symptom, it's not that your body has reacted, it's that there's so much virus that has multiplied in your system that is now attacking cells in your throat, and the first thing you feel is a sore throat a week later. But by then, it's already in your lungs doing the same thing, but you don't have pain sensors in your lungs. So, so you can't go on the basis that, well, if I start to feel sick, then I'll kind of take it seriously, but it, it won't work out. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an old joke, and I hope some people will forgive me, but the joke goes, um, when you're dead, you're the only one you don't know you're dead. It's everybody else around you that suffers. And the same thing for when you're stupid. Um, this virus doesn't have a brain, and we do. The bottom line is that nobody knows they're sick. That's the reason for the joke. Nobody knows they're sick. Nobody else around them either knows they're sick. So you have to keep a solid distance. This distancing thing is a real strategy. You have to keep a solid distance, including family. Treat everybody like they're sick and treat everybody like they're not sick, but you are. You don't get to choose who is going to get infected. You don't get to choose who you protect. By the time you feel symptoms and realize that you might be sick, you're going to be freaking out, who have I touched? Who have I been near? Who have I exposed in the last two weeks almost? And that's going to be a difficult situation. We all have businesses to run. We all have to try to keep things going and try to keep the economy going. There's the overreactions, if they're unfounded, are one thing, but the distancing is real and it can work and they need to slow this thing down. You know, Italy, everybody thinks that the mortality rate is 3% on this thing. It's varied from China, 3.5% to some countries only 1%. But the bottom line is in Italy, we've seen it's not. Because it accelerated so fast in Italy, it overwhelmed the healthcare system. And the people that did get sick, which is about 20% of the people that get sick, have a bad reaction and need urgent medical care to keep them alive. This includes pumping oxygen into their lungs continuously with a tube and another tube to pump out the mucus and the, the volume of fluids so you don't drown. Every hour they have to pump out. And without that, in Italy, right now, the mortality rate is now near 10%. And that's because not everybody can get the care because the system is overloaded, which means that between 10 and 20% is the true mortality rate if you can't get the required medical attention. The only way that we can actually keep the health services in a position where they can keep up is to slow the spread and, like you say, flatten the curve so that this thing doesn't accelerate to where that 10, 20% is far greater than the medical system. We need to be able to slow it down, distance out. If possible, last three months, there's lots of countries working on vaccines that won't be available for months. 
But there's some of us that will not make it based on age or based on our health condition. And we have to try to see that we flatten this curve out and slow its spread with distancing uh, while still managing to stay in business. Um, and i tell you what, take it very seriously and understand that you will not feel the symptoms. You're the one with the brain, not the virus. You have to be very aggressive in keeping your space and your distance from everybody so that it doesn't spread. And I hope that some of this helps and it's not designed to freak everybody out, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's solid, solid, solid fact. All right, everybody, thank you. Feel free to spread this around to your friends if you want to and get the word out.